Hello. Today we're in the functions chapter of Learn to Code and we're doing the activity across the board here. So across the board here uh, it's we're going to write a function, at least one function, and um, what we're trying to do to put in this function is a repeating pattern, some kind of a pattern that repeats in this puzzle. The idea then is once we've got that repeating pattern in the function we can call it uh, however many times we need to in our main program down here so that it'll make our uh, program easy to write and definitely more easy to read. All right, so let's take a look here at our, uh, at our puzzle. Uh, we've got Byte over here in the corner, and Byte is standing under a gem right now. It looks like he's embedded in a square uh, of nine uh, different uh, squares, and there are nine gems in here, three rows of three. So uh, looking at this, we're supposed to find some pattern of things we can do to make this puzzle a little easier to solve. So what do you think? It looks like to me, uh, at least one thing we could think about doing is since this is in three rows of three, maybe a function where byte went along and collected three gems all in a row would be nice to have. Because if we had a function where uh, maybe call it uh, collect three gems, if we had a function called collect three gems where byte just started at the end of a row and he walked along and he collect three gems, that would mean we could call that function three times with maybe some turning around or getting to the end of the rows in between, and each time we call it, he would collect three gems, and by the end of that, we would be done with the puzzle. Okay, so let's start at least with that idea, and we may change some things as we go along, but that seems like a good abstract idea, collect three gems. Okay, so we're going to do that in our function here. Uh, in our function, uh, we're going to say we want this abstract idea to be uh, collect three gems. Collect three gems. And in order to do that, we're going to, um, it looks like we're under a gem right now. So maybe we'll grab the gem that we're on right now. So that's the first thing we're going to do is collect our gem. Okay. And then we need to grab the other two by moving forward and collecting that gem, move forward, collect the gem we're under in the second, uh, the second square, and then let's move forward again to the third square and collect the final gem. Okay, okay, that's it. So this idea here, or this function here, will say if we're at the end of a row, and if we say call, if we call our function collect three gems, it's going to go along and collect three gems. So always good when you write a function to try it out. So let's try it out here by calling collect three gems. Notice that once we have our function defined, it shows up here in the bottom, uh, in the bottom of our uh, helper screen, our, our, our typing helper. So if I type in collect three gems, and I'll run the code, and let's see if byte uh, will grab three gems and then stop. Collect one, move forward, collect two, move forward, collect three, stop. Okay, great. So that worked. Byte looks disappointed, but he shouldn't be because we're on our way here. We're going to help him out now. We have a nice function that takes care of the abstract idea of collecting three gems. Now, it's just a matter of saying to ourselves, uh, okay, uh, how can we use this idea to do it three uh, to do uh, to to take care of the three rows of gems. All right. So the first one we've taken care of already. The second one now we have a choice here. We could walk back to the beginning of the first row right near us here, but we're already close to the one or close to a gem right near him. So maybe it makes sense to follow this pattern right here, where we collect this row first. Then we turn to the right and collect this middle row. And then we would have to, I think, turn to the left to collect this final row. Kind of a big S shape. That'll avoid bite walking around too much uh, without collecting gems. Okay, 
So let's put that into motion. Uh, we're going to collect uh, these three gems. Now we said we need to turn to the right. So turn to the right. And we want to move forward into the next row. Move forward. And now we're going to need to line ourselves up along the row. So we want to do one more turn to the right like that. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to test this out just to be sure we're lined up and ready to collect three more gems. Um, but I want to point out something real quick here. Notice that I left a space in my program. Uh, I left a space between this and these three things here. And that's fine. You can have a blank line in your program. It's perfectly fine. In fact, in this case, I like it because it tells me that this part here is going to collect three gems. And these three lines of code are actually going to, uh, you know, get me lined up for the next one. Okay. All right. Let's run the code. Just make sure this is working how we think. All right. This is going to collect three gems. And now we're going to turn right move forward, turn right, and now if we call collect three gems, we'll come up into this function and we'll collect the gem we're under, we'll move forward, we'll collect the next gem, we'll move forward, and we'll collect the next gem. So let's try that. I'm going to leave another space in my code just to make this easier to read, and I'm going to call collect three gems. And run this. I'm going to run this a little faster. So I'm pretty confident this is going to work. Collect three gems, turn right, and collect three gems. Good. Okay. Now we need to kind of swing around to the left here and line ourselves up to pick, uh, to pick up this last row of gems. So that's going to be a turn left, a move forward into the last row, and another turn left so that we're lined up ready to collect those last gems. Okay. All right, so collect three gems. Again, I'm going to go ahead and run this faster. Collect three gems, turn to the right, move forward, collect three gems. OK, so that solves the puzzle. That's uh, great, and Byte's happy, but I am going to uh, talk about maybe some other changes we might want to do to this. This is a nice program. We have a nice function here that says collect three gems. But uh, I want to talk about these three ideas here, these three commands. These three commands together, they tell us we're kind of going to be turning a corner to the right, right? And these three kind of tell us that with, we're at the end of the row, we're going to be uh, turning a corner to the left. Okay, so we could actually, since these are nice, uh, you know, these three commands all together sort of represent one nice abstract idea to turn a corner to the right, we could actually make a function to do that. Okay. So I'm going to do that just because I want some extra practice here. Uh, but not only because I want the practice, it's because I think that this abstract idea of turning a corner to a right might be useful sometime in the future. So func turn corner to right It's going to be made up of just these three ideas here. And I'll just go ahead and cut these out of here and put them in here. You could probably see what I'm doing with this already. Now that I have a turn corner to the right and I cut that code out of here, I can now just call the function turn corner to the right. Okay. And the same thing with this down here. I'm going to make another function here because this, uh, these three lines of code have the abstract idea that I'm turning a corner to the left. So I'll cut these out of here. I'll paste them into a function, func turn corner to left, okay, and uh, paste this in here. And now we have an abstract idea 
a simple function that turns a corner to the left. All right, so now I can replace what we had in here, turn corner to the left. So we have two nice new functions that represent ideas of turning a corner. Okay, and that really simplifies our code here because now we can just say exactly the way we laid out our plan for this puzzle was that we were going to collect three gems, then we were going to turn our corner to the right, we're going to collect three gems, then we're going to turn a corner to the left, and then we're going to collect three gems. So this main program here is very readable. It totally explains our sort of abstract thinking about the whole puzzle and the details of each one of these, like collect three gems, is left to this function up here, collect three gems, and the details of turning the corners are all implemented in these function here, turning corner to the right and turning corner to the left. Okay, now we better be sure this works after all this, so I'll run the code one more time. And actually, I'm going to stop this, and let's run the code again, but this time let's step through our code so that we can watch the, uh, we can watch the functions being called. Okay, step through my code. The first thing that's going to happen is collect three gems is called. We execute through there. When we're done with that, we return from where we left from, and now turn corner to the right is called. We jump out of our main program and execute that function. Now turn collect three gems is called. We jump out of the main program and execute that function. Now turn corner to the left is called. We jump out of the main program, execute that, and go back to where we came from. One final collect three gems. And he does it. All right. Good job, everybody. So just to remind you what we did here is we decided to um, go ahead and look at our puzzle and see if there were any repeat, repeating patterns. And the one we noticed at first was that there were three, there were three uh, rows of three gems. So we decided let's go ahead and make a function that says collect three gems. And we wrote that and we tried it out. And after we tried it out, we said, well, that's the first thing we want to do. And then we planned out a route through, a nice efficient route throughout the puzzle that showed that if we went and collected the three gems and then we turned to the right and collected three more gems and we turned to the left, we would make this nice S pattern through, through, through the world and uh, get all the gems. Okay. And finally, uh, we said, well, let's go ahead and uh, implement uh, a couple helpful functions, turn corner to the right and turn corner to the left, that would not only make this program nice and simple and easy to read, but these, uh, these functions may be useful sometime later on. And later on, if I ever find myself having to turn a corner to the right or turn a corner to the left, I've already written those functions, and they're right here ready for me to copy and paste into that particular code. Okay? All right. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, good job, everyone. See you next time.